Hi, so thanks for sticking with us on the last day of the conference. I'm Michael, I'm from the University of St. Andrews, and I'm presenting a research project on the gas condition manipulation of color perception. And this project was done in collaboration with David Flutter from the University of Dundee and my PhD supervisor, Miguel Nacenta. First, a little disclaimer. Since I'll be talking a lot about colors, we are kind of limited by the projector technology that we're using here. So not all of the colors might show up as I intended or as they're described in the paper. So some of the colors are also exaggerated to make them more visible, so sorry for that. This is the most white this projector can show. This is the brightest we can get. It is uh, made up of its brightest red, its green is green, and its blue is blue. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have its black as black. And if you actually look at this black and compare it with the black of the fabric just below, it's not really that black. It's actually just the color of the display screen. And the range of colors that we can get from this projector is what we call its gamut. It's made up of the primaries that we just saw. And this is obviously not the whole range of colors that we can perceive in everyday life, just as you saw with the black. But just because we can't project a color onto the screen doesn't mean that we can't make you perceive it. You might be familiar with this kind of visual illusion, which is called simultaneous contrast. In each of the columns, you see a central color patch that is surrounded by a different color. In each column, the central patch is the same color, but it appears different in the top row than it is in the bottom row because of the varying surround. So the top green patch appears more green, more bright than the green patch in the lower row. So to reiterate, this means that if you have a color that can be shown on a neutral background using the projector, and this is the bluest blue for this brightness, we can change how it is perceived by the observer by changing its surround. And this means we can actually display a color that couldn't otherwise be rendered by this display. We can push it outside of the available gamut. And we can vary how much we push it or how it is perceived by further varying the background. But of course, as you can see, this is kind of difficult to do for multiple objects because if you have multiple objects and we want to have a global surround, all of them are affected by the same color at the same time, which might not be what we actually want. Of course, as we can, saw in the previous example, we can have different surrounds for different areas of the screen, but this fundamentally changes what we're actually displaying and might also be very undesirable for whatever we're doing. But eye tracking to the rescue. So since eye tracking demos are kind of difficult to do, let's just assume that all of you, whenever there's a crosshair on the screen, are looking at the crosshair. No cheating. <laughs> so whenever you're looking at a specific object, we can actually change the surround of the object depending on its location. When we know where you look, we can have different surrounds for objects in different locations on the screen using the eye tracking data. But we can't just change the surround. Let's say you have a photograph of a sunrise at the St. Andrews Cathedral, and the dynamic range of the image is just far too high to be displayed with this projector. If we can display it in a gaze contingent way. If you're looking at the sky, we show the detail that is available in the sky, even though that means that we lose the detail in the cathedral itself because it's just too dark. But once you look at the cathedral, we can change the image so the detail is available in the cathedral itself, even if we lose the detail in the sky. And this kind of gaze contingent tone mapping has been proposed before, changing the brightness of an image depending on where you're looking. And we can also extend this um, not just to changing the global brightness, we can also change local detail in different areas of the screen. So for medical applications, for example, you can vary which details are available depending on where the observer is looking. But actually, these ideas have been proposed, but we don't actually know how this affects the perception of the observer. If we have these kind of gaze contingent displays that change the color all the time, is this kind of equivalent to what we're doing if you're doing static tone mapping? Is this in any way equivalent to what people perceive if they look at a static image? And if you change the colors around all the time, changing the surround of different areas, does this affect the perception of color depending on where you're looking? And even more important, since it probably does, how exactly does it change the perception of the color in different areas? If you want to have any control over how things are perceived, you need to be able to predict how things look. And while I won't be able to answer all of these questions today, I hope that I can lie, lie uh, kind of a foundation for these kind of techniques. So I will be focusing on two questions mainly. First, can we employ this kind of gaze contingent simultaneous contrast of affecting the color perception in different areas of the screen? Is this equivalent to what we know from static simultaneous contrast? And how does it behave? 
And the second question is, can we apply this to some specific task? In this case, we will look at color discrimination. Can we make colors more different depending on where they are located and how we manipulate the surround or the colors themselves? So to answer the first question, we designed an experiment. In the first experiment, we had this kind of arrangement, as you saw before. We have two color patches, and in the static, we have two main conditions, a static condition and a gaze condition condition. In the static condition, we have the two different areas around each patch, and in the gaze condition condition, we have a global surround that changes depending on where you're looking. We then asked our participants to change the color of the left patch using a slider device um, to change it in a way that it matches the other color. That way we could kind of figure out if the color appearance changes, they would indicate a different color. And we did this for a bunch of colors. And what we, was, what we found is this. So what you're seeing here is the color that was indicated by the participant. You see the same color presented on two different backgrounds. And you can see that those colors were indicated as different colors or perceived as different colors by the participant. This is what we got for the static condition, which is basically just the simultaneous contrast effect that you've seen before. But we also did this then for the gaze condition condition. And what we found there is very, very similar. So this would mean that this is kind of equivalent in the gaze condition and the static condition. And we did this, of course, for a bunch of different colors. And we found that most of them behave very, very similarly. So this means that we can influence the perception of color patches on the screen by changing their surround. We can do this in different areas. And this means that we can potentially enhance or extend the gamut of a display device using this kind of gaze condition technique. So the answer to the first question is, can we employ this gaze condition simultaneous contrast? Is yes, we can do this. So at the next step, let's see what we can do with this. Can we use this to make colors more differentiable? So the basic idea here is that we have two colors that are located very closely in the color gamut of the device that we are using. But by changing this around, we should be able to make them appear more different by changing their appearance by manipulating them. And since we have the, uh, have the ability to potentially push the colors outside of the gamut, we should be able to differentiate more colors. Um, to investigate this, we designed a second experiment. And in this experiment, we showed this kind of color gradients. We have a color on the left side and a color on the right side. And we have kind of intermediary colors in between that appear to gradually change, but appear very close. In the experiment, this was slightly more difficult. And the task of the participants was to sort these colors to, be, to generate a smooth gradient. If they were very good at differentiating the colors, they would make very few errors. But if they couldn't differentiate between adjacent colors, they might mix up the two color plates. And we used two different gaze contention techniques to aid them in their task. The first one is based very, similar, uh, very much on the first experiment. Basically, we changed the background of the current, depending on which patch currently was attended. Hopefully, being able to extend the gamut and making use of this gamut um, in order to have the colors be more differentiable. Um, the second technique we looked at is not changing the background, but instead changing the peripheral color patches. The color patches that you are not looking at are changed in a way that they are more different from the one that you're currently looking at, which should make it very easy to actually sort them. And to be very complete, of course, we did the combination of those tasks. The first um, one is with the absence of both of them, which is basically just the static condition where everything is static, our baseline, and the two techniques, and then the combination of two techniques where the background changes and the color patches changes, which might be even better than the single techniques. Okay, and this is what we found. What you're seeing here are error scores. That means high error score, less differentiable. People made a lot of errors. Low error score means the participants were very good at differentiating colors, few errors. You see our baseline, the static condition where nothing changed on the gaze, is up here. High error score, which is kind of be, uh, to be expected. But it was kind of unexpected. If we only change the background, we don't really see an improvement over the baseline. So while we saw that we can push around the colors and potentially extend the gamut, we didn't see a benefit for the color differentiation task. So this might not be enough for this kind of task. On the other hand, if you change the peripheral color patches in the two conditions that involve um, this kind of manipulation, we did see an improvement over the baseline condition itself, showing that 
we can employ gaze condition techniques to make the colors more differentiable, even if not through the background, which is what we overall found. If you change the patches, improvement. If you change the background, no improvement by its own. The combination saw the improvement, but probably only because we also changed the patches. So the answer to the second question, can we use this to enhance the ability to discriminate colors, is yes, we can use gaze contingent techniques that improve the differentiability, but it's actually a little bit more tricky than we first expected, since we have the first technique, which should increase the gamut, but doesn't seem to increase the differentiability between colors. So, of course, there are still plenty of open questions left. So while we have this very first investigation, we don't really know whether we can predict how colors appear. There are existing models of color appearance that predict how colors appear depending on their surround or other external conditions. We don't know really if they are applicable to this kind of gaze contingent displays. It would be really useful if we could use those existing models to predict colors and have computational models that can transform images or displays using this gaze contingent technique. Um, the second important thing is, if we change the colors around on the whole screen, are people noticing this? And is this kind of um, detrimental to the task that, that they're doing? Flickering of colors all over the screen might be very annoying to the participants and irritating. And of course, by my first investigation focused on very simple color patches, if you want to use this for more complex images, we need to figure out how we can employ this to complex images that have textures that have varying brightness and luminance and uh, chromaticity throughout the image without actually making it, again, very disturbing if everything flickers and consist uh, generate a consistent perception of the image. It would be really awesome if we then could employ this, for example, for astronomical data where we have dynamic ranges that go far, far beyond what the human eye actually can perceive. And on the other hand, it would be really useful if we could employ this for information visualization tasks we have, uh, where we have a limited number of visual variables, where we can have a limited amount of colors that we can differentiate that could be employed to indicate specific values, for example, in this kind of tree map. But overall, to sum it up, while we don't know everything yet that is to know about gaze contingent manipulation of color. We do know that we can employ gaze contingent simultaneous contrast, and we do know that we can employ it to make colors more differentiable in a basic way. So thanks for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions. Um, to see if we have some questions from the audience. Um, I have a, um, a um, short question. Um, so wh when you were changing the colors in, in, in the background, you didn't see the difference with the foreground. Do you have any sense of the, the sort of um, subjective um, perception of why this happened? This is a fairly large area, so maybe they noticed more and then sort of disturbed so them? This is one of the things that could have happened, that the color patches just were too close, so it was actually affecting all of the color patches that you could perceive at the same time, and for the comparison, that then just didn't help. And it, this might be then better to have them more separate or vary the background depending on, uh, also separately for the peripheral color patches. Let's uh, thank our speaker again.